One of our favorite places to visit in Charleston is teeming with beauty and culture. Here to tell us what's on display, we'd like to welcome, for the first time in a long time, back to the studio is Angela Mack, Executive Director of the Gibbs Museum of Art, and Sarah Arnold, Director of Curatorial Affairs. Ladies, it is so great to see you here. It's great to be back. It is. You know, I have to say, we did some pretty fun segments virtually, but this is even better being able to see you in person. Um, and it's just much like being able to go to a museum and to see the work on the walls as opposed to seeing just pictures of it online or in a book. Absolutely. So you've got some really exciting things coming up. Let's talk about the, the Japanese art that has now flooded the Gibbs. Beautiful stuff. Well, I mean, uh, the work that has been put into this exhibition and the book that goes along with it is truly to Sarah Arnold's credit as our Director of Curatorial Affairs. She's been working on this project for a very, very long time. And even though COVID intervened in terms of the process, uh, we were able to mount the exhibition and the accompanying exhibition that shows how the Japanese prints really influenced our low country artists. And I know that a lot of people are familiar with what Japanese prints are. We've seen them everywhere. They use them in pop culture. They use them in very sure. different ways. But Sarah, can you describe for our audience who might not be as familiar with what those look like typically? Sure. Well, the Japanese actually uh, modernized the woodblock printmaking technique for their uh, purpose of uh, advertising and to document modern culture back in the 16, 17, and 18 hundreds. And these are all woodblock prints. They were made in workshops. They had an artist who designed the prints. They had carvers who did the carving, and then they were inked and printed onto paper. So it was this amazing, very detailed process. The prints are of landscapes and seascapes nature. They documented things like the Kabuki theater. Mm -hmm. um, so what was going on modernly in Japanese culture at that time? And they've gone on to influence artists worldwide. You know, people are very familiar with those seascapes, like you were talking about, the big waves, the big blue waves right. crashing. Right. Um, but the woodblock technique was that something that was invented by well, the Japanese? It's actually something that was invented by the Chinese. The Japanese brought color to the prints. And so they started experimenting with a number of different colors and were able to create blocks for every single color. So any time you're looking at a Japanese woodblock print, notice the number of colors that are in there. And there is a block that is specifically carved for oh, each wow. of those colors. So um, the, uh, the work and effort that it takes to perfect those is outstanding. And our collection really demonstrates that. And I want to ask you in a moment about how you go about procuring these prints, because that, that is the work that, that you do. But Angela, if I can ask this question of you, when you're looking at uh, Japanese artwork and just the influence that it had on subsequent artists, mm -hmm. maybe you can talk a little bit about... Of course. So this particular takes. collection came to the Gibbs in the early... Uh, or came to Charleston, rather, in the early 19-teens. And artists had access to see these works, much like the Impressionists had access to seeing Japanese prints um, in the mid-19th century. So the influence was the same. And you look at artists like Alice Smith or Anna Hayward Taylor or Elizabeth Verner, pre-introduction to Japanese prints and then post, and their style and the way that they present their work, especially Alice Smith, is, is just completely different. Um, they just absorbed it and used it. Yeah. And I love the idea of taking a Japanese technique or a Far East technique and then using it to depict a low country scene, scene which is it's fabulous. And, and we have such beautiful landscapes here that you'd be remiss not to use them. But how do you find these pieces? I mean, you, you pull from local collectors. How, how do you know each other? How do you find one another? <laughs> well, it's interesting, as Angela said, this particular collection of Japanese prints has been in Charleston for quite some time, and we've really done research over on it for a number of years, and we've really uh, corresponded with a lot of experts in Japanese prints throughout the country to help us figure out you know, what the stellar pieces are, and that's what this show represents. Um, but pieces that are like the Alice Smith or other local artists, um, those are things that we've collected with relationships um, with collectors throughout the city and, and beyond for a number of years. And 
Um, do they know, find they, you or do you both, seek them out? Both, uh -huh. yeah. They come both ways and um, and we've been really lucky. Um, there have been a lot of fantastic donations to the museum. Over and over if you're years. a member, you can actually watch how this technique is done. So if you want more information, you can go onto their website. This is a good place to take a break. When we come back, I want to talk about some of the other exhibits that are coming up later this summer and into the fall. We'll do that in two minutes. We're back with Angela Mack and Sarah Arnold from the Giz Museum of Art, and we've been talking about some exciting exhibits that are coming to the museum, and you definitely want to get tickets to not just the Japanese exhibit, which is just beautiful, but you also have French Impressionists that are going to be gracing your halls. Uh, for me personally, knowing that Edgar Degas is going <laughs> to be making an appearance, not him particularly, of course, <laughs> but his work is very exciting. Who else is going to be featured? Well, we'll have works by Renoir, um, Gauguin. Uh, we'll have a wonderful piece by Mary Cassatt, who of course is an American, was an American artist, but was trained along and worked beside a lot of the French Impressionists. And of course, this again sort of connects the Japanese prints to these artists who also were influenced by them, particularly as a, in the late uh, 19th century. So having this continuing conversation with the Japanese prints is really a marvelous opportunity for the museum. Yes, because that evolution, it, mm -hmm. it, and it crosses the ocean. continents and oceans. <laughs> right. It's true. It's, it's really incredible. And then to see these other artists that have been so celebrated for their beautiful work. Um, is this a traveling exhibit, or is this something that was specifically plucked by the Gibbs? to show Charlestonians. It, this is specifically for the Gibbs, wow. and we've been very fortunate to pull from both some local collections, but collections throughout the region and across the nation. And so we'll have about 20 works on view, um, wonderful landscapes, brightly vivid colors, uh, the things you associate with the Impressionists and these amazing masters, so it'll be a treat yeah. to have here. Wonderful. And you go from the classics to something far more contemporary. Would you call it contemporary or modern, this next artist? Uh, Romare Bairdin's work um, is, is just incredible and definitely modern, particularly the works that will be displaying because it will focus on his abstract pieces. And we will be one of three venues across the country that will showcase it. And we actually open the show. So um, it will be seen for the first time at the Gibbs. Well, this sounds like a fantastic, enriching experience to come to the Gibbs. Uh, for people who are interested in becoming members, where do they find more information? Oh, definitely on our website, uh, www.gibbsmuseum.org. And we would love to have more members join. Uh, it's a wonderful way to enrich your life in Charleston through the arts. And um, you, you know. do a wonderful job over there. Well, thank you. <laughs> Angela, Sarah, so good thank to see you. you. Thank good you for being you. here with us. We'll be right back.